And so I want to encourage you. And I'm suggesting that you should ask God for the gift of faith to believe that with God nothing is impossible. What I'm trying to do is, <laughs> I don't know how you can translate this or how fully understand it, but I'm trying to push the bounds of faith further and further out. That when I believe for something in the past, that's enough. I want to believe for something bigger and bigger and better in the future. Why? Because God says in the last days, he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Come on, we're living in the last days. Expect the outpouring of the spirit. Pray for it. And when you pray, act as if you got it. Because I found that's one thing when I was baptized in the Holy Spirit. There are others baptized at the same time as me. There was no change in the life. I don't know. I don't. In fact, I was talking to, I was baptized in the Holy Spirit when I was 15. And one of the people I was talking to yesterday. And there was no change in his life. But for me, it was an explosion. Oh, it was an explosion of power. But in the first day after I'd received the Holy Spirit, I was in the church prayer meeting. Oh, I was 15. And the Holy Spirit is on me, and I'm saying, these people know I received the Holy Spirit. There needs to be some demonstration. And I, I began to speak with tongues. I began to prophesy because I had to put the thing into action by faith. And you know, the trouble is this, you as pastors and leaders, you know the word, you study the word. But like me, what I've done is I've stopped just studying the word. I still do, of course. But what I'm doing is putting it into action and turning it into reality. And my whole life, that's my whole life, is to turn it into reality. And of course, you've got the confirmation in verse 32. Come on. Well, it's confirmation to me anyway. Uh, let me just read it to you. This is still Joel 2 and, and verse 32. It will come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. So there is salvation. This is God's word. It is deliverance. It's salvation. And I'm believing for your nations, just as we see that when under communism they believed that they would destroy Christianity, they didn't. Through the persecution, through the suffering, has come revival which has swept those nations. And I believe that when I stand in faith with you, or when you stand in faith with me, together we're going to see this, that whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be delivered. Delivered from sickness, delivered from fear, delivered from bondage, and of course delivered from sin, and to become the children of God. But yes, we have to work hard, there's a lot done, because after you've done this, and after I've done this, then you can start to read chapter 3. But don't start reading chapter 3 until you fulfill chapter 2. Because in chapter 3, it says in verse 2, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and there plead with them for my people and my heritage, Israel. Now that's the return of Christ, when the nations gather in the valley of Jehoshaphat, which is that valley between the Golden Gate and, and the Mount of Olives. And Jesus comes back to the Mount of Olives. He enters Jerusalem through the Golden Gate. So at that moment, the nations will be gathered in the valley of decision. And they will make a decision to serve God or reject him. And this is what I'm challenging you. Your nation, your nation has to make a decision to serve God or reject him. And when I come, and by God's grace I will come, that is the challenge we're facing, to turn the nation from destruction to face and to know the living God. <laughs> 